He madring kila ma tulunga pala mitya daya mudhadiko Maudyang na kaniva sinang bhaya pararva kyariva prartitaha Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamayayang Thang mun changir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatu mam Namaste. So today I want to introduce four sutras, but they're very short. And that's why we're introducing four of them instead of one big one like we have been. And these are the Mahavakyas, the Chatur Mahavakyani. This means the four great sayings from the Vedas. And even though they're short, they're extremely profound, and they express the core truths of enlightenment, self-realization, in a very compact form. So let's take a look at these. The first one, Pragnanam Brahma, means Brahman is Pragnana. And that comes from the Rig Veda, Aitareya Upanishad, 3.3. 3. Pragnana means that which is obvious, easily seen, directly perceived, not exactly the same way as Prakash, but in this case, Pragnan, easily known, directly known. So that means Brahman is not something far away and, you know, way different than ourselves. No. Pragnan means Brahma, Brahman, is the essence of self with a capital S. And of course, we are that self or that self is us. The self, or Brahman, is only subjective. That means it's never something out there. It's always something within ourselves. It's the place from where we are looking. So Brahman is consciousness, or more correctly, unconditioned, non-dual awareness. And this awareness may or may not have an object. When it has an object, it's known as consciousness. And when it doesn't, it's called awareness. In any case, it's pragnan. It's immediately obvious as soon as you know what to look for. I'm going to tell this same old story about Ramana Maharshi. When somebody would come to him asking, what is Brahman, or what is the self, or how do I find the self, or something like that, many, many times he replied, are you aware? And of course, the person would say, well, yeah. And he would say, are you aware that you're aware? The person might think for a second and then say, yes. So the Ramana would say, so the self is realized because the nature of Brahman is awareness of awareness. This is the self. To be aware that one is aware is self or awareness without an object. And to be aware that one is aware of being conscious is self with an object, Turiya. Turiya is when one is conscious of being conscious. And the consciousness, either waking, dreaming, or sleeping, becomes the object of one's consciousness. 
So let's move on to the next one. I am Atma Brahma. The self, Atman, is Brahman. That's from the Atharva Veda, Mandukya Upanishad, 1, 2. I am means this person, me. <laughs> I am Atma Brahma. My real self is Brahman. And of course, this really is explained in very much the same way as the previous Mahavakya. I, myself, is this being, Atman, the Supreme Being, Brahman. It's simple, right? It's simple, but it's not easy either to grasp or to realize. And of course, just grasping it intellectually it would never do, really. One has to actually realize it. And when one does realize it, it means, well, it means a lot of things. <laughs> it means the end of the concept of an individual, a separate I or ego. But one doesn't become the whole. One realizes that one has been the whole all along. And there was never a separate I, never a distinct individual, never an ego, that these were just thoughts, actually misapprehensions. Huh? We say when somebody becomes nervous about the future, we say they're apprehensive because it means they are seeing something coming and they don't like it, they're afraid of it. So to misapprehend something means to get it wrong, <laughs> which leads to anxiety, moroseness, depression, uh, desires, lust, hankering, anger, and so many other negative things. So the aim of self-realization from the beginning has to be to recognize huh, that we are already Brahman and we have never been anything else. So let's look at the third Mahavakya. Tattvamasi, thou art that. This comes from the Samaveda, Chandogya Upanishad, 6, 8, 7. This is maybe the most famous of the four Mahavakyas. Tat Tvam, you. Huh? Tat Tvam, Tat means that, and it's a code word in the Upanishads for Brahman. You are that Brahman and nothing else. Everything is consciousness. Without consciousness, there would be no awareness, there would be no existence, there would be no separate individual self or objects. There would be no time, no space, no dimension, no action, etc., etc. In other words, everything that we perceive is only consciousness. It's, it's a long-standing problem in philosophy to try to prove the existence, the objective existence of the material world. It's simply unprovable because any evidence that we would introduce to prove it would have to come from that same world, the world of phenomena. And to have phenomena requires so many assumptions and prior conditions, such as like space, time, existence, <laughs> becoming, and so on. So as soon as one says this or that, referring to an object, 
This invokes all these unstated assumptions, with the exception of when one is talking about Brahman, then the assumption is there is only one, one without a second, and nothing else exists except Brahman, because only Brahman is always existing, is never changing, is always constant, and is always the self. Now let's look at the fourth. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. And this comes from the Yajur Veda, Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad 1 4 10. So this is the most direct of the four. And this is the one that was popularized by Shankaracharya and his followers. Even they used it as a mantra. Aham Brahmasmi, which is actually three words, Aham, meaning I am, Brahma, which means Brahman, and Asmi, which also means I am. So why would the word I am or phrase I am be repeated? Because the actual translation or the better translation of this is I am that I am. The famous statement of God in the burning bush to Moses in the Old Testament of the Bible. Moses asks God, well, what are you? And he says, I am that I am, that which I am. Huh? In other words, it is what it is, baby. <laughs> And I am that. So anybody who realizes the self knows this intuitively. They don't feel any separation between I and that. Because there is no separation. I am that. Huh? So this is the ultimate truth which is realizable by meditation on the right subject. And what is that subject? Well, that's the subject given by these four Mahavakyas, the great sayings. Now, of course, we've only scratched the surface when it comes to discussing these. So later on this week, Richard and I are going to have a more in-depth discussion and uh, go into some of the methods that are given in the Vedas and by the great souls like Ramana Maharshi for realizing these things for yourself. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.